Well, welcome. Uh, so that's a wake-up call, right? Savage Jesus. So we're kicking off this new series this week. It's called Savage Jesus. Now, I picked this uh, series name for two reasons. The first one is a lot of people, when they hear like, oh, we're doing Savage Jesus, they're like, what? Savage and Jesus together in a church? That just doesn't seem right, right? And the, that's the response I want. I want to kind of ruffle your feathers a bit. I want that reaction because I want our language here on Wednesdays or here in church to be the same as what we are like when we're in the real world. I want us to, uh, to have God know that God's presence is here but, and then also know that it's holy when we're here. But I want us to make sure that we're still ourselves when we're in church, and we're the same person when we're in church as we are when we're outside the church. So if you drop the word savage in, out, out and about with your friends, we should drop savage when we're like in church with our friends here. So that's one of the reasons. The second reason is I wanted to use this title because this is something most people wouldn't think fits Jesus. People like to think of Jesus as this soft, gentle, cuddly, understandable, safe person, yet that just does not describe Jesus fully. Jesus can be fierce, he can be uncontrolled, he can be determined, angry at times, and he's one who will make you feel uncomfortable. He is savage, and he wants you to be savage like him. Are you? Do you want to be? Do you know how to be? Do you know how big of a deal it is for him to have you become like him? Well, that's what we're talking about today. That's what the series is all about. Now, before we go any further, though, I thought we'd like look at the definition of savage. Now, better place to look other than Urban Dictionary. So I went to the Urban Dictionary, and here's what it says. A savage is someone who does not care about the consequences of his or her actions. Now, I have a few examples of maybe what I thought like fit this description. Here's the first one. It's of a teacher uh, kind of doing this savage act. Check it out. One, two, three. <laughs> So I thought that was a pretty uh, savage move on his part. And then I have one other one. Just this guy, he obviously doesn't care about the consequences of what he's doing. Check it out. Those are some quality moves, but he's not caring about the consequences of what other people think. So that's awesome. Now... These are examples of maybe someone being savage or funny examples. Uh, I was trying to think for myself, when I was in high school or middle school, uh, I was determined to maybe be savage in some parts of my life. And I thought of this one time in high school, uh, as I was brainstorming how I, I didn't use the word savage, but I was like, how can I make myself like epic or stand out amongst people? And I was brainstorming how, and some of you maybe know this about me, but I've done karate my entire life. Does anybody know that already about me? Yeah, so I've done karate like since I was four. I'm like a fourth degree black belt going for my next one. And I was trying to think of like what makes me stand out amongst people. And I was like, ooh, there's this talent show coming up in school. And then I'm like, what if I could break a brick? Like, that seems pretty boss to me, right? Like, break a brick in front of people for the talent show. I'm thinking, like, this is going to be awesome. Now, I started thinking about it, and I'm not really worried about the consequences of maybe breaking my heel or the consequences of, like, completely, like, failing, like, in doing it and being, like, in front of everybody, like, I totally failed, like, I didn't break it, or I wasn't nervous about the consequence of what people thought about me, like, being in my karate uniform, and like, whoa, you do karate, really? You know, I wasn't nervous about the consequences, and I started actually to get what I like to call haters, you know what I'm talking about when I say haters? Yeah, so I started to get haters uh, of people like, Psh, a, a brick, Aaron, you're gonna break a brick? No way. You're going to fail totally in front of everybody in front of you. There's no way you can break a brick. There's no way you can do it. You're on stage in front of everybody. 
Well, I decided to go for it. And here, I don't have a, a video. I didn't think I should show the video. But here's a little picture of me. It's really blurry. But me on stage, you can see the talent show. It's, there's me and there's the brick. And I crushed it. I totally crushed it. And I was thinking like, savage. You know, and I was waiting for people to be like, you're a savage. You know, and like yell it out to me. That didn't happen. But I wanted to be savage and stand out amongst people. To be savage is like to be known for what you are determined to do. And I was determined to break this brick and to stand out amongst my friends. And I didn't care about the consequences that came with it. Now, with all that said, what does doing savage-like things have to do with Jesus? Well, Jesus was determined to be savage as well, and in a way that would grow God's kingdom. In this series, we're going to be talking about how people are, like, when people with Jesus, they were trying to be savage as well. They were trying to figure out how to be the best of, like, the best followers of Jesus. There were times where we see Jesus actually gets angry and flips tables. He has a whip, and he does, like, some nasty things. Well, we're going to talk more about those in the series, but today we're going to talk about this moment where Jesus literally leaves people speechless. It's in Mark 3, and there's one thing you need to know about this story before we dive into it. Now, back in the day, there was this day called the Sabbath day, and what it was is it was this special day where you were not allowed to work. You weren't allowed to work, and it was like, this is the day you worship God. This is the day you don't do anything physical. You just worship God, enjoy God, and rest. Who thinks that day sounds amazing? You know, like, just rest. Yeah, that sounds amazing. Well, it's still kind of around now. But anyways, this was a huge deal back then. So big that Jesus is actually walking around with his followers and these religious people are are looking around and they see Jesus walking and it's the Sabbath day. No one's supposed to be working. And Jesus is walking around with his followers. All these people are like following him and he comes and he sees this man with what the Bible says is a deformed hand. His hand or his arm is deformed. He's unable to probably move it. He's unable to function it. It maybe looks kind of gross, probably looks kind of weird. Well, anyways, Jesus sees this man. And this man is like, whoa, Jesus, I've heard you've healed people. Like, can you, can you help a brother out? You know, like, <laughs> hook me up. Well, Jesus knows what's going on right now. Like, it's the Sabbath. If he heals this person, he'd be working. He'd be working. And all of these religious people are watching and they're waiting to see what Jesus does. Because they want to call him out and be like, Jesus broke the law? Jesus is breaking the Sabbath law? They're waiting. Well, Jesus says this thing. It says in Scripture, it says, Does the law permit good deeds on the Sabbath? Or is it a day for doing evil? Is this a day to save life or to heal life or destroy it? Well, Jesus says this thing, and like everyone's like, huh? Nothing's said. Silence. A pin could drop. Because Jesus is calling calling him out, saying, what's more important, the law or me helping this person out? Well, Jesus heals this man. No one says anything. He heals this man. And these religious leaders, they don't even see the miracle other than, oh, he broke the law. We're out of here. We're going to figure out a way to get rid of him. We're going to figure out a way to get rid of him. Now, Jesus, he does not care about the consequences of his action of healing this person because he knows what he's determined to do here. He's determined to bring God's kingdom here to us, to heal people, to help people experience their best lives, to show us how to live the way God wants us to. So he does, in that moment, Whatever it takes to show that. And he gets haters. He gets haters from it. Or people that want to take him down, those religious people. And they actually do take him down. That's the story of Jesus. That's what he's known for today. He gets taken down, but he gets brought back up. Now I want you to think. Have you ever been in a situation like this before? A time where you are determined to do something, even though you know you might get haters for doing it. You felt maybe you needed to say something to a person who was spreading rumors about another, and you did it, and you experienced the consequences. 
Maybe you felt you needed to do something to help someone out after your friends put them down or kind of bullied them in a way, and you just felt you had to do something about it. You felt you needed to stand up for something you believed in, like everyone was going against this thing that you believe in, but you just felt inside that you had to stand up for it. Or maybe you felt you needed to do something epic and you followed through with it. But then, after you did these things, you got haters. Your friends kind of gave you crap for it, of what you said or you did. They looked down on you. You were singled out. Well, you just did, in that moment, a savage act. The Bible has a bit to say about this, actually, of how we are to be determined to do things that actually make a difference, that win the battle, that are right. And I want you to read along with me. It's in 1 Corinthians 9.24. It says, Don't you realize that in a race everyone runs, but only one person gets the prize? So run to win. All athletes are disciplined in their training. They do it to win a prize that will fade away. But we do it for an eternal prize. So I run with purpose in every step. I'm not just shadow boxing or boxing the air. I discipline my body like an athlete, training it to do what it should. Otherwise, I fear that after preaching to others, I might make myself disqualified. So it's talking about racing. Now, who knows, like, people, like, maybe your parents that, like, run like half marathons or marathons because they're just like, yeah, I'll just do it. Like, it's just fun. Who like knows people like that? Anybody? Yeah, like, and then you're like crazy, right? Crazy. Well, I'm kind of like one of those people. I'm like, I'll just do it. Like, just it's fun for me to do it. No big deal. And then there's people that are like, I'm not doing it unless I'm going to win it, unless I think I'm going to win it. Anybody know someone like that? Like, I'm not doing something unless I win it. Yeah, I'm kind of like that too. So I do both, I guess, but... Anyways, uh, there's these times where we're running, and what this verse is saying is we need to make sure we're living our life to win or to do things that God has committed us to do or told us to do instead of like just going on with life and just going with it or racing to just race. We should live life to win. So as I'm getting close to, to wrapping up here, I want to talk about how you know if what you're determined to do is actually a savage act for God. Now, does anybody know those times, like, when you're just out and about, that you get this gut feeling that you just need to do something about the situation? Like, you're feeling really awkward, or like, you're in the situation, you see something really weird is going down, and you're like, I just need to fix this. Anybody there with me? Like, I experience this all the time. For some reason, I always experience this. Now, the one time that came to mind is I was a soccer player in high school, and I went to UW-Green Bay, which was a D1 school, so I wasn't good enough to play D1 soccer. But I was maybe good enough to play D2, and they had intramurals. And everybody that was good enough to play, like, D2 soccer was there and playing. So these games were intense, all right? These were intense matches. And all of my friends were soccer players or th- that were on my team. So we'd be playing these matches, but they meant nothing. They meant nothing. Well, my friend or my roommate, he was a hothead. Does anybody have a friend like that that's like a hothead that just like is ready to throw down, you know? And it's like, this is a scrimmage or like this is just a game for fun, but he's ready to throw down. Yeah, so this is happening. My, my roommate wants to fight somebody every game. Now, there's something about like bro code to me that like, oh, rats, if you get in a fight, I'm going to have to like back you up. Like, no. I don't want to do this. But, like, he would always get in a fight. Like, something like, he'd, like, say something snarky to someone. He'd, like, do something, like, maybe, like, hit a guy a little too hard or whatever it is. And in soccer, there are these, like, slide tackles where things just happen. And then, like, all of a sudden, after it happened, things escalated, and they start getting close and, like, ready to brawl. Kind of like this. Check out this video once. So that was him, basically. No, it wasn't actually him, but that was him in our games, basically. He'd go up, and, like, he'd be, like, in the guy's face, and I'm like, no, 
No. And something inside me just made me feel awkward about it. Like, I had to do something. And what I did is, like, I was determined to do it. And I didn't care about the, what the consequences were, but I would always be that guy that, I don't know if you saw, there's, like, a guy like, no, back up, or, like, pulling the guy back. Like, I'd be like, dude, just let it go. Like, just chill. Like, don't worry about it. Like, it's not that big of a deal. Like, by the way, this is a scrimmage. Like, no one really cares whether or not we win. Like, dude, just forgive and, like, let it go. And I would be that guy all the time. Every time that was me. I was determined to follow through with showing my friends and the guy he was about to fight forgiveness. And it was what I would like to say, or when I think of what Jesus wants us to do, I think it was a savage act, actually, because I didn't care if my friend got mad at me for stopping his fight, because I knew I was doing something God-honoring. I was teaching forgiveness. Now, there are all kinds of situations like this that you experience every day, that you get these gut feelings inside that you just, you got to follow through on. If you want to be savage, you got to follow through on, whether that's like forgiving someone, whether that's maybe like you, you just see your friends like and they're ready to brawl and you're like, no, you guys, just chill out. Forgive. Like, let's just, let's move on. Or maybe it's like, oh, you see like your brothers or sisters and they're like totally not obeying your parents or like, and you're like, you know how mom's going to get like if she like sees you like this or you know what dad's going to do. And you can like kind of warn them, like and get them out of that awkward situation and help them obey your parents. Or caring for someone. You can care for someone. Or not talking bad about someone. You feel inside like, I just shouldn't say like what everybody else is saying about this person. So you decide not to. And you decide to say, hey, let's change the topic. We're treating others well. To be a savage Christian or to gain respect as a Christian or a leader, you got to live out your calling as a Christian and follow through with the acts and gut feelings you're given. So, what are you determined to do this year to show Jesus? To show, show Jesus, to be savage like Jesus. For me, in middle school and high school, I wasn't determined at all to be savage like Jesus. And none of my friends from high school or middle school were Christians or gained anything out of it. They didn't learn anything from me because I didn't live it out. And they're not really Christians anymore, even today, because I never showed them that. What if you did? What if you taught those things to your friends just by your actions? Do you think you'd make an impact on them in middle school? or high school, or after high school, do you think that would stick with them? What if just one of you did that tonight? Five of you did it. Twenty of you did it. Or all of you did it. Do you think just one of you could make a difference in our community or somebody's life by actually following through on the things you feel inside you need to do? So, what are you going to set out to be savage of this school year? What are you going to be determined to do that is a savage act? What are you not backing down on? What are you going to do that you don't care about what the consequences are for? Or what are you going to do that the haters won't stop you from doing it? You can be savage uh, for fun, like I was, like breaking a brick that has nothing to do with living out a Christian faith or living out uh, being a Christian savage. You can do things that are fun, but also do something that's savage for God something that actually matters. So if you want that this school year, to be reminded of what you are determined to do, especially when you're in that moment, I'm going to pray that God reminds me to live it out and to follow through with that. If you want that too this year, as you're going through school, as you're being with your friends, and to be reminded of that in the moment, I'm going to pray and ask God to remind us. If you want that, you can pray with me. Hey God, thank you for everyone that's here today. I just pray that as we try to be like you, Jesus, I pray that you help us follow through on these savage acts or these things that we just feel so determined to do inside that sometimes it's easier for us to not do. But I pray that you remind us to follow through on our, those gut feelings of living out the way you want us to. 
Remind us in that moment, in the heat of it, when we're, when we're deciding whether or not to do it. I pray that you give us that little nudge to help us follow through with it. In your name we pray. Amen.